Drawing crypto from Super Pets is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey, hello, wonderful people! It's Shinaviv, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. Just a quick note before we start, in this demo I'm going to be drawing in an app called Procreate which is on the iPad, but you can follow along using any drawing tool you want because this is not going to be about any kind of fancy feature, it's really going to be more about breaking down the characters, so the proportions of everything. That being said, if you are working in Procreate and if you want to have my illustration as a reference right here at the top, the way to do it is going in the wrench icon menu in the canvas submenu and activating the reference toggle right here, which is going to let you import it. So if you want to download my illustration along with the color palette we're going to be using in this video, there will both be linked in the description below and they're totally free, but otherwise you can just use the video as a reference and I'm going to add the X codes for the different colors on the top right throughout the entire video. Now the bulk of the video and what we're going to start with is actually what I said, the character breakdowns. So we're going to create a structure or the skeleton, I guess, for this character using the most basic shapes possible. And we're going to do that in a super rough, messy sketch. So go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to sketch. Now for your sketch, you can use any color of your choice because we're not going to see it in the final result. I personally like to sketch with a neutral gray, but anything you like here can work. Again, we're not going to see it in the final result, so it really doesn't matter. Same thing with the brush, at this stage for the sketch, just pick something you're comfortable with. But as a heads up, in this video, I'm always going to suggest a few different brushes. I'm going to suggest free Procreate brushes that you can use and that are going to work really well. I'm going to try to suggest different brush alternatives if you're working in a different software. If you're working with pencil and paper, just, you know, work with pencils, that's totally okay as well. And I'm also going to suggest brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. Now these brushes are not essential, but they can help you get more professional results because they're really super sensitive to the Apple Pencil. So if you want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below and there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. But again, absolutely not essential. You can follow along with whatever you have. And for the sketch, yeah, just pick whatever you know you're comfortable with. If you're working with Procreate and you're working with the free brushes, you could go in the sketching pack and pick the HB Pencil. If you're working in different software, just find something that has pencil in the name and should work well. And if you do have my illustration bundle, you could pick the sketching brush. So first we're going to map out three circles that are going to be one for the hips, one for the torso, and one for the head. Now as you can see, Crypto has a pretty big torso, but otherwise uh, the hips and the heads are pretty small and they're both roughly the same size. So we're going to start with the torso, which is going to be the biggest circle. And I say circle, but you really don't need to draw a perfect circle at all at this stage. We're really just mapping out everything, mostly focusing on the proportions. From there, we're going to draw the head and the hips. And the head is going to be pretty much aligned with the torso. And it's going to be, you know, a slightly smaller circle. And the hips is going to be a circle that is the same size, but this one is going to be kind of at a 45 degree angle. So just roughly like this. Great, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and connect the different circles to create the shape of the body itself. So starting from the front of the torso towards the head circle, which is going to become the cranium. And then same thing with the back of the torso, which is going to become essentially the shoulders to the back of the head. We're also going to draw the back, so just connecting kind of the shoulder to the hips. And then we're going to do the belly, but the belly is a little bit more like a curve, so we're going to start it, again, in front of the torso, curving it inwards, and then reaching the hips like this. From there, we're going to draw the legs, and the legs are going to be two long ovals that start at the bottom of the hip circle and almost reach up to the kind of torso circle. So we're going to draw one right here. And the other one, same height, but on the side, kind of like this. And again, don't worry, the sketch is going to be messy, but it doesn't matter. We just want to focus on mapping out everything. And from there, you can just quickly map out the feet. Okay. 
So next we're going to draw the front legs. Now these dogs are supposed to be superhero dogs and to convey that strength, the DC illustrators and animators made it so that the front legs and what would be the torso, for example, on a human, um, on those dogs was really, really, really big. If you look at like Superman, which by the way, Crypto is Superman's dog, superheroes in illustration tend to have super, super disproportionately big shoulders. And so they kind of did the same thing for these two dogs. So to show these two massive dog shoulders, I guess, we're going to draw two circles roughly in the middle of our torso circle. Now I know I'm saying torso and shoulders and it's not accurate for a dog, but I'm sure you get what I mean. And from there, we're going to draw the front legs using two ovals. So we're going to have one slightly shorter oval that is going to be essentially kind of this little weird bend that we have. So doing that for both legs. And then a long oval that's going to reach towards the ground. And then again, you can just map out the feet. Great, so we're almost done with the structure. Again, I know it might look crazy, but bear with me. We're going to map out the head and then we're just going to refine this crazy looking sketch to turn it into clean line art. So go ahead, just zoom onto the head section and then draw a slightly curved vertical line and a slightly curved horizontal line. And both of those are going to help us place the facial features. Now, Crypto has a pretty rectangular face, so we are going to extend the top of the head here to create more of a rectangle instead of a circle. And then we're going to draw essentially the front of the face. And for that, you can draw one horizontal line like this, an angled line going towards the bottom like that, another horizontal line, and then just connecting both with a slightly curved line. You can draw the nose, which is just a big rounded triangle. And for now, we're just going to leave out the eyes and the mouth, otherwise we're going to have way too many lines. We're just going to add them in the next step. But before that, we're just going to sketch out the ears real quick. So for the ears, you can draw a triangle at the top of the head because they're kind of floppy bent ears. And same thing on the other side, just the triangle. But this time we see a little bit more of the ear, so it's not going to be a triangle this section. It's going to be more like a a weird rectangle, I guess. And if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed right now, if you feel like this is just never gonna look good, like how can you make this look like a nice illustration, that's okay. Bear with me, trust the process. The reason we're doing this, meaning drawing all the basic forms, instead of going in and trying to draw, you know, the outline as right like right out of the gate like the nose okay then we have the face the mouth the reason we're not doing that and we're instead doing a character breakdown is so that we can quickly map out the structure and then very easily going back in and just playing with the proportions until they are exactly how we want so once you mapped out all the basic shapes what you can do is use any kind of selection tool that you have available to you in your software in procreate we have this selection tool here at the top and then you can draw a selection around something that is not exactly where you want it to be. So for example here, I feel like my head is a little bit too at the front. If you look at the example, the head is a little bit more at the back. Now since it is just a bunch of basic shapes, it's really easy to go around, select those basic shapes, and then with the arrow tool, just reposition them, maybe even resize them so that they look exactly how you want them to look and so that you start with a strong structure, but it doesn't take you a long time to do it. Now, changing proportions, changing angles and stuff like that when you're starting already from a clean kind of outline is really time consuming and quite a bit harder. So it is worth it just to start mapping out the basic shapes first moving them around as needed, resizing them as needed, and then once you have a structure that, that looks right in terms of the proportions, then you can move on and trace over that structure super quickly to create your line art. So take all the time you need here to just play around with your structure, and once you're done with that, we're going to meet up in the next step where we're going to create the line art. So once you have a basic structure, that you like in terms of the proportions. It really doesn't need to look clean or anything, as you can see. Go ahead and create a new layer above the sketch and rename it to line art. 
Now right now our sketch is pretty dark, so we're also going to lower the opacity of the sketch until we can just barely see it. I'm going to keep mine a little bit darker so you can see it in the video, but in your case, lower the opacity as much as you can before the sketch pretty much just disappears. Now here for the line art, you have a few different options in terms of both colors and brushes. I personally like to have my line art be darker versions of the different colors in my illustration, but you could go ahead with a super cartoonish, just black outline. For now though, the color doesn't really matter. Later in the video, I'm going to show you how to recolor your line art really quickly. So at this stage, just pick something that you know is going to be quite different from, you know, your sketch. So it could be, for example, this red right here if you're working with a color palette, but otherwise anything that is going to be, yeah, different from your sketch. And in terms of brushes, again, you have a few different options depending on the vibe you want. I like my outlines and my line art to have a little bit of texture to them. I just like to have as much texture as I can in my illustrations. So if that's what you want as well, if you're working with free procreate brushes, you could go in the sketching pack switching to the 6B pencil. If you're working in a different software, anything that has pencil in the name should work really well. And if you do have my illustration bundle, you could switch from the sketching brush to the outlines brush. And at this stage, essentially, all we have to do is trace over the crazy lines we have to create a clean line art. So here I'm going to stop talking to let you focus on tracing your line art. I'm going to keep my video going in the background so you can use it as a reference. And we're going to meet up at the end of this chapter. If you look on YouTube at the bottom, there's this chapter. We're going to meet up at the end and I'm going to show you how to draw the cape and this kind of Superman logo at the front, as well as the facial feature. So for now, just focus on drawing essentially kind of the outline of the body. And we're going to meet up for the rest of the details before moving on to the colors. Great, so once you have the outline of the body, we're going to zoom back in onto the face and draw the rest of the facial features that we're missing, starting with the mouth. And for the mouth, you can draw kind of the corner of the smile, which is going to align with the horizontal line that we mapped out on the head. And then the front of the mouth is kind of this wavy, super rounded W that you can just extend to the corner of the mouth. We're also going to draw the nostril on the nose, so just something a little bit like this. And then we're going to move on to the eyes. So just drawing two U-shapes. And then something a little bit like Nike swoosh for the eyebrows because Crypto on the poster has this really strong, kind of willing, confident look. And for now, we're just going to leave the eyes empty. We're going to draw the pupil and everything in the coloring face. So next, we're going to draw this kind of Superman sign as well as the cape. And so for that, you can start by drawing a slightly curved horizontal line 
towards the bottom of the neck when it kind of connects with the torso. And then the bottom of the collar is going to have this kind of point at the front for the Superman logo. And then you just bring it in to connect it with the back. You can then add a diagonal line to close up the front logo section. And then zooming in, we're going to erase the part where it overlaps with the neck. We're going to add a bit of a thickness to that logo part, so just a smaller little outline in that section. And then we're going to draw the S shape itself, so just it'll shape like this. Then mapping out kind of the front curvy bit of the S. Bring it up and around. Now the cape itself is going to be pretty simple. You're going to start towards kind of the middle of this back section of the collar and you're just going to drape it over the leg and then doing the same thing in the back. So just kind of draping over what would be the shoulder I guess and then falling down. Once you have that you can go back in and just kind of refine the shape so erasing this collar part maybe adding a bit of thickness to the cape on the outside erasing any part of the leg that is overlapped and then adding a fold so starting from pretty much the bottom at the back just kind of bring it over at the top and then looping it down again, just create a fold. And you can create some little ripples at the bottom as well, very simple. We're really not gonna make it more complicated than that for, for the fabric. And once we have the cape, we can go back to the color part and just add a little bit of detailing. So we're going to add another kind of angular line here, then following along the bottom, and then drawing this kind of random little shape like this. So take all the time you need to refine your line out here and once you're happy with it we're going to move on to the colors which is going to be much easier because essentially at this stage we're working with the equivalent of a coloring book. So if you made it this far you can make it to the end. The hardest part is behind us by now. Great, so at this stage we could go ahead and hide the sketch. We won't need it anymore. And since the dog is kind of the cream color, we're just going to quickly map out the background so that we can see what we're doing. So if you're working in Procreate, all you have to do is select your background color layer and then set, set it to whichever color you want. If you're working in different software, just go ahead and create a new layer and then fill in that layer with your color. Now you can go with whichever color you want here. On the movie poster it is just white, but here I'm going to go with a kind of dark blue color in the color palette. It's this one right here which as you can see is yeah, pretty dark and quite desaturated. Now if you want, we can also add a bit of a gradient in the background. So just creating a new layer, putting it below the sketch and renaming it to, I don't know, background gradient. And then picking a lighter, more intense version of the gray blue we use or any other color you use in the color palette. I'm going to go with this one right here. And then with really any brush, it doesn't matter at all. You're going to draw some sort of a circle on the top left of your piece and then fill in that shape. Now to turn this into a softer gradient, we're going to use any kind of blurring tool you have available in your software. Most software do have something called Gaussian Blur. Now in Procreate, it is in the adjustment panel here at the top. You can see it is right here. And you can add as much or as little blur as you want to create the kind of you know gradient you want. Great, so now that we have that, we're going to create a silhouette with just one color for the entire dock. So go ahead and create a new layer above the background gradient but below the line art. And if you want at this stage, honestly, you could just go ahead and delete your sketch, it might be better. And we're going to rename it to, uh, let's go with dog shape. And here we're just going to pick the cream color, so in the color palette it is right here. Otherwise, as you can see, it's kind of an orange that is really bright and quite desaturated. And in terms of brushes here, go ahead and pick the most basic round brush you have available to you. So if you're working to procreate, that could be in the airbrushing pack, the hard brush. 
if you're working a different software any kind of round brush that doesn't have texture or feathering or anything like that is your best bet but if you have the illustration bundle go ahead and pick the base round brush now at this stage all we want to do is create an outline of the character and then fill it in to create this silhouette and with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and let me know if you would like a tutorial on how to draw Ace. Now, if you're new on the channel, the secret password is a game we play. In every single illustration video, I hide a secret password for you to find. And that does a few things. One of them is that it's just really great because you know me, you see my face in the intro, you hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you are. And whenever you leave a comment, no matter what the comment is, I get to sometimes your face, sometimes your name, and it's just so great to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on this channel. But the most important thing about the secret password is that it does give me a lot of information or insight, I should say, on how to edit and pace my videos better, and that helps me create better tutorials for you guys, which is really super important. So yeah, if you've watched this far, just let me know in the comments if you would like me to draw Ace, which is Batman's dog, and then we're going to keep going. So once you have your silhouette, we're going to map out or color block your different elements on different layers, starting with the cape. So go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to cape. Now to save a little bit of time, since we already have the silhouette and we want the different elements to stay within the base shape, we're going to apply this cape layer as a clipping mask on the dog shape. Now clipping masks are available in most software. In Procreate, you just tap on the layer and then select clipping mask. And essentially what a clipping mask does is now everything we draw on this cape layer is going to stay within the dog shape layer. So if clipping masks are not available to you in your software, it's really not a big deal. You're just going to need to be a little bit more precise when you draw your cape shape so that you stay within the lines. Now the cape is this really classic Superman red. In the color palette, it is this one right here. As you can see, it is quite light and also very saturated. And then from there, all you have to do is outline the cape shape. If you have a clipping mask, you can be pretty loose. And then just filling it in. Same thing for the color. We're just going to create a new layer. And we're going to put this one between the cape and the dog shape, which means it should automatically get applied as a clipping mask. If not, make sure you apply it manually. And rename the layer to color. Now the color is this really beautiful gold, so in the color palette we're going to work with this super bright, really light yellow that is pretty much middle of the way in terms of saturation. And then yeah, same thing, you're just going to outline the color shape and then fill it in to create the color blocking. We're also going to color block the nose on a separate layer, so just new layer nose that crypto has this kind of pink nose so in the color palette you can see it is this one right here it's kind of this pink that is a little bit darker and also roughly middle of the way in terms of saturation filling in the shape and then the last piece of color blocking we have to do is the eyes but the eyes we're going to do them separately meaning we're not going to apply them as a clipping mask on the dog shape because i have a technique that i really like for the eyes which if you've watched any of my other videos you already know but for now just go ahead and create a new layer above everything but below the line art rename it to eyes and make sure again it is not applied as a clipping mask it should just be a normal layer and for the eyes we're going to go with just pure white Now we're going to draw the iris and the pupil on separate layers as well and those layers we're going to apply as clipping masks onto the eyes so that they stay within the eye shape which is going to make everything so much easier. So just go ahead and create a new layer, rename it to uh, iris, although we're going to draw both the iris and the pupil, it doesn't matter, apply it as a clipping mask. And here we're going to pick a nice light brown in the color palette, it is right here. Otherwise you can see pretty much middle of the way in both lightness and saturation. And you can just go ahead and really quickly draw the iris shape. We 
We're then going to draw the pupil, which is going to be a very, very dark brown in the color palette. It is right here. You can see it's the same hue as the iris. It's just super, super dark. And then just go in and add the pupil. Now before moving on to adding a little bit of color variation, we're also going to add light in the eyes, so just creating a new layer, applying it as a clipping mask as well. Renaming it to Eye Lights. And then with pure white again, we're just going to draw a dot on the top right of each eye. Great, so we're almost ready to start shading, but before that we're going to add a bit of color variation because Crypto has a lighter like head and belly than the rest of his body. So to do that really easily, we're going to activate what is called alpha lock on the dog shape. So in Procreate, the way to do it, you just swipe your layer towards the right with two fingers, or you can activate alpha lock within the menu. Now what alpha dot does is kind of similar to a clipping mask in the sense that now everything we draw on the dog shape layer is going to stay within the shape that was already there. So again, it is just some sort of a time saver. If you don't have alpha lock in your software, all you have to do is be a bit more careful when you draw your color variation to, to stay within the line. So if you don't have alpha lock in your software, it's really not a big deal. All you have to do is be a bit more precise when you draw your color variation to stay within the line. Otherwise, we're all going to pick a lighter version of the base color we use for the dog. So in the color palette, the base was this one right here. Now we're going to go with this color right here in the color palette, which as you can see, is just a lighter version of the base color. And here we're going to switch for a slightly textured brush. And for that, you have a few options. If you're working with free Procreate brushes, you could go in the charcoal pack and pick the willow charcoal. If you're working in a different software, anything that has charcoal in a name works well. If you do have my illustration bundle, at this stage, we're going to pick the basic texture brush. And we're just going to brush this lighter cream color on the head, on the neck, and then kind of on the top part of the belly and the top part of the arms. Okay, so right before we move on to shading, we're going to just recolor the outlines really quickly. Now for that, we can use the same technique we used to add the color variation on the dog, which is activating alpha lock, but this time we're going to activate it on the line art layer. So once more, just swiping towards the right with two fingers or activating it from the menu. If you don't have alpha lock in your software, at this stage you have two different options. If you do have clipping mask, you could just create a new layer above your line art and applying it as a clipping mask and then drawing your line art new colors on this layer. It is essentially going to be the same result, but you're just going to have more layers in your final file, which is not necessarily the best. And if you don't have either alpha lock or clipping mask, you're just going to have to manually go over your line art with the same brush you use and again, just be more precise and a bit more careful. If you do have alpha lock and clipping mask though, it's going to be really quick and easy. We're going to stick with the texture brush we used to add the color variation. And we're just going to go with darker versions of all the individual colors we used so far. So I'm going to start with a darker version of the dog in the color palette. It is this one right here, just to the right of the base color. And then you can see if you just brush really quickly, it's going to allow you to recolor. So I'm going to stop talking once more to let you focus on recoloring your outlines. All you have to do is either color pick the different colors and make them darker, or if you go in the color palette, the darker version of the base color is always going to be to the right of that color. Now I'm just noticing here I don't have it for the color, so I'm just going to create it real quick, but you're going to have it in the color palette when you download it. It's going to be right there.
So take all the time you need to recolor your line art and once you're done with that we're going to move on to the final step which is going to be shading. So we're going to keep shading pretty simple here. We're mostly going to use it to just separate the different parts. So it's not really going to be about realism, although if you do want to go for realism, you could totally do it as well. And for the shadows, if you want, you could go in and, you know, color pick all the different colors, make them darker, and then paint your shadows that way. But what we're going to do to be a little bit more efficient is draw all the colors on one layer, and we're going to paint them all in one color, and then we're going to apply the layer on which they are as what is called a blending mode. And a blending mode is going to make it so that the color we use for the shadows is going to adapt and blend to whatever is underneath it. So go ahead and create a new layer below the eyes but above the rest of the dog elements. Apply it as a clipping mask so it stays within the dog shape. And rename it to shadows. Now blending modes are available in most software and usually they are located in the same area as the opacity of your layer is going to be. Now in Procreate to access it, all you have to do is tap on the N next to the check mark and then and you're going to see it's going to open up the list. Now here we're going to go with the blending mode linear burn and we're going to lower the opacity of that layer for now around 40% just so it's not too intense. Now, as usual here, you can pick whatever color you want for your shadow. The only thing I would recommend is avoiding going with something neutral, like any kind of gray or charcoal, because then your shadows are going to look a little bit muddy and that's not, that's not great. Usually I go with some sort of a grayish purple or pink in the color palette for this. I'm going to pick this one right here. It's a bit more of a, like a salmon pink than what I usually go with. But since this dog is kind of a cream, if we go in with something that is quite blue, it is going to look really blue, so I'd rather go with a little bit more of a pink hue, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling at this point. You can pick whatever color you want, as long as it's not gray, it should be good. And sticking with either a charcoal brush or the basic texture brush, we're just going to go over and quickly add shadows, starting with the ear, kind of the part that is floppy. Both ears, actually. <laughs> Maybe the back of the ear here, something a little bit softer. There is also going to be a shadow between the eyes and below what it would be the brow bone to accentuate that part of the face and that bone structure. We're also going to add a shadow in the nostril, one below the ear. Pretty big one below the face. We're also going to add shadows to help separate the S, the S shape, so just in these kind of little curvy areas. And then adding a shadow in this shape right here. as well as one kind of in triangle shape at the top of the color right there. We're going to draw a big shadow that's going to curve around the front leg and then cover pretty much the entire bottom section of the belly because it's kind of hidden behind the legs and the cape so it's not getting a whole lot of light. We're going to draw shadows on the back legs as well. This one here is going to be kind of following the cape shape. Drawing one at the bottom of the feet too. And then this back leg here is going to be kind of shaded, but this time not following the cape shape because the cape is not there, following the belly shape instead. Then going back up, we're going to do the front legs as well. So we're going to have one shadow created by the color, kind of like this, rounded triangle. One shadow on the torso created by this front arm. 
And then this front arm as kind of a muscle, so you can just add a pretty soft shadow. And then the other front leg, you can pretty much shade the entire right side and creating a gradient towards the left. Now if you're struggling creating gradients or if you feel like some of your shadows should be a bit more blended, you always have the option to use any kind of smudge tool provided in your software. Usually it is a little finger icon like this. And you can set it to kind of soft brush, like an airbrush soft brush. That is probably the easiest option to find. But if you're working in Procreate and if you want to add a little bit more texture, I do recommend using in the painting pack the stucco brush. And then you can just go back in and smudge a few shadows in, especially around the neck area. It should be a pretty soft shadow. Um, that one here where there's the muscle, the front of the leg, and maybe kind of this bottom part of the belly. Just making sure they're all nice and soft. Oh, and I just realized we didn't shade the cape. So in this kind of fold here, we're going to add a shadow as well. And in the fold at the bottom too. Very simple, but <laughs> we need to make sure that we do it. And you can also go back and play with the opacity to kind of change the intensity of the shadow. I feel like mine were not super intense, so I'm going to increase the opacity probably around... Mm, let's go with 50%. Now before we move on to the highlights, which is really going to make the character pop, we're going to add a bit of a ground shadow. So create a new layer above the background gradient, but below anything related to the dog. And rename it to ground shadow. Here we're also going to use the blending mode linear burn and we're going to lower the opacity to roughly what you set it for the shadows. It doesn't need to be exactly the same but in the same kind of vein. And then with the same brush, same color, you're just going to paint a bit of a shadow under the dock. Great, so the last thing we're going to do is add the highlights, which is going to make such a big difference, but it's super easy. So go ahead and create a new layer above the dog shadow, but below the eyes. If it's available to you, apply it as a clipping mask as well. And we're going to rename this layer to lights. Now, just like for the shadows here, you could go back, color pick all the different colors and make them lighter, or we could just use a blending mode. So this is what I'm going to do at least. In here, we're going to use add. Now, add is really, really strong, so make sure you lower the opacity quite a lot already out of the gate, probably between 20 and 30%. And for the lights, just like the shadow, you can pretty much pick any color you want. I usually like to go with a super bright yellow, and the color palette is going to be this one right here. And in terms of brushes here, you can pretty much use whatever you want. You might want to switch back to the brush you use for your line art so you can be precise, which means if you're working with free Procreate brushes, going back to the 6B pencil. Or if you're working with my illustration bundle, going back to the outline brush. And with the same size you use for the outlines, we're just going to go over and do this technique that I call outlining your outline. So any kind of outline or any element, I guess, that is facing the top left, we're going to outline the outline with light. So for example, the ear facing the top left, we're just going to add a bit of a light following the outline. So as you can see, it's really simple, but it really makes the character pop from the background and it's going to make the different elements pop from each other. So we're going to do that all over the dog. It should take, I don't know, maybe a minute or two, max. And you can add some extra highlights, for example, on the nose to make it pop even more.
If you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to draw more of your favorite characters like Ace the Dog which is going to be coming out next week, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more character breakdowns for you. But before we leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.